Knicks hung in there, battled like they always do. Their only lead of the game, guys, was 11 to 10. Early in the game, I mentioned they were down big. They tied it at 92, but they just couldn't get over the hump. Yeah, and again, credit Miami because they were desperate in this game. They knew how important this game was in the standings for them and also what they did with Jalen Brunson, who comes in scoring 91 points in the last two games. The focal point was to shut him down and frustrate him. Clearly they did because this was, we haven't seen Jalen Brunson struggle this much in a long time. Listen, Jalen Brunson's got to be exhausted. He's banging, he's dealing with double teams, triple teams every single night. Made the right play all night like he always does. Got double digit assists with 10 assists. Dante DiVincenzo, Deuce McBride shot the ball outstanding. The problem was the acquisition that Miami picked up at the trade deadline. Scary Terry Rosaire, mm -hmm. he can really score the basketball. And when he gets hot, he was making incredible shots over an outstanding defender and Deuce McBride. And that was the difference in the game. You know, the Knicks right now, they got to figure out a way. Just control what you can control. Obviously, that's winning basketball games. We'll keep an eye on the scores of all the other teams and, you know, the standings. But they need to find a way to bank wins right now. That's all they can worry about. Knicks are now fifth in the East, tied with Orlando at 44 and 31. But remember, Orlando has the tiebreaker. Fourth quarter, Knicks able to battle in there and again 92 all four minutes to go Brunson you mentioned normally so good at the end of games but right. only five out of 18 from the floor they just didn't have that extra gear tonight yeah and when they needed a bucket you always expect him to make it but other guys were stepping up to make it and it really did start with the defense Josh Hart playing another 45 minute game and you see the Knicks turning defense and trying to get some offense and Deuce McBride has been money from three-point range. He was four for eight from three in the game. And how about Boyan Bogdanovich and the contributions Wally he made in the fourth quarter of this game, making some big shots as well. Oh, he was outstanding. He really was. And, uh, you know, that was, that was the big shot there. Tied at 92. Yeah. That pushes the lead to three. Miami Heat couldn't find any type of offense. Got Boyan to Bogdanovich, one. yep, gets that bucket to go. And I think he should have deserved a little more minutes tonight. Was that, that, that was, was good, close. right? That was close, but it was, it was good. close. I thought it was, might be still on there, and come that on, was man. just the backbreaker. Come on, I mean, come on, man. That was <laughs> Caitlin Clark esque <laughs> right there. That was just a tough three, and, you know, the race is tight. It's definitely tight, but at the same time, Knicks can't get all caught up in this look race this, here. Look at how tight this is. And the Cavs and, are playing Utah right now. Yeah, and by the way, the Bucks lost to the Wizards tonight, so when you look at the loss column, Magic, Knicks, the three, what are they? It's all about the loss Three games column. back. Knicks are only second. two up on the Pacers and Heat. And, and right, they need to find a way look with seven games up, to go though. to go four and three. You are basically one good or bad week away from either being in the play-in or being in See, second. What's amazing is how <laughs> quickly they go four and three at least. This has turned yeah. so quickly. Yes. We were looking at Milwaukee, all of us. When we were looking at the standings, we're looking at Milwaukee looking up. Yes. Now we're looking down Going because all of a sudden that play-in line is getting close. Because well, that's we were what playing the lose. Spurs and we were playing Toronto. They we were playing Detroit and we were playing like... But they took advantage of that. Yes, they did what they, they were three supposed out of four to do and beat that. those teams. They won three out of the, four. The San Antonio game was the first one that hurt because they were going into that right. game trying to sweep that week, take yeah. care of business like they've done all season. They couldn't get that win that would have put them right on the heels of the Bucks. Instead, totally. it put them back into the pack. Think about if they could have gotten that game. Then now. the Thunder That's game. And think about that. You know, he, So uh, Gilgis Alexander hits that shot. Now that pushes you down even more. This game pushes you down even more. And now you're in the mosh pit. Now you're in the, you're, you're in the battle right now. Yep. And there's still only seven games to go. It's a fun time of year. Watch scoreboard and get some wins, like Wally said. All right, Monica McNutt helped call the game tonight on ESPN Radio 98.7 FM. Monica, your impressions. You had a, obviously a good view there. You're on the scene. What do you think about tonight? So, okay, let's just take a deep breath. Um, I think the Heat were in a unique position where they were excited to get their guys back. Going into tonight, you guys, Tyler Hero was the only person listed as questionable. So they had depth that they have not had consistently all season. I think they were up to the challenge of the New York Knicks considering how the season series already started. Coach Eric Spolstra started his pregame discussing Jalen Brunson having an MVP caliber year. So there was the appropriate level of fear, if I can steal the term from Coach Popovich. And I thought that tonight was probably one of their better defensive performances top to bottom in terms of the depth and everybody that actually played. And so you had a team that was getting people back versus a team that is fighting through some injuries and frankly, shortage of productivity when you talk about the bench unit. And so 
there's a lot to kind of chew on from that, but that's my assessment of this one. Well, so Monica, what you're saying is the Miami Heat started looking like the Miami Heat again at the appropriate oh, time man. of the season, Golly. right? But what they Jeez. looked, why they look different though is Terry Rozier. Like they didn't have anything like him in their run last season. And he was just, I mean, what did you see from him early in this game to let you know it was going to be a different kind of night because it looked like he couldn't miss. Well, right. I think he missed his first three and then didn't miss again until the fourth quarter. Uh, he finished the night with eight threes, tying a season high for him. The speed with which he's able to play with and the aggressiveness. I had a game here for a national broadcast in January, right after, excuse me, in February, right around the trade when he was at it. And of course, the human element of all of this, he's still trying to solidify his living arrangements, get his family situated. But he did say that he was pumped about the opportunity to join a team that has made deep postseason runs and what every NBA fan knows to be true in terms of heat culture and so he felt like he could add with his defense his ability to create off the bounce and of course the three-point shooting and you saw that tonight but Han I gotta add though Nick uh, Nikola Jovic the rookie for those guys mm -hmm. a legit 6'10 in terms of his versatility and the way that he could defend that we saw in that first half I just saw again the flashbacks of the Knicks struggling versus teams with length and athletes with this Miami Heat team being probably one of the healthier games in terms of availability you've seen from them this season. Okay, Monica, as always, we appreciate it. Then we will talk to you soon. And, you know, Monica makes a point about health, and they're still missing Tyler Hero. And Tyler Hero's out. He who's a, who's a great scorer, yeah. yeah. And, and, and He's, on, he might come off the bench, which he should. Yes. Right? Which I think that would be that a better fit with Terry Rozier in the starting lineup. Hero's always, he's been sixth man of the year. He's mm -hmm. been an outstanding mm -hmm. bench guy. You, he comes in, you run the team through him. Plays with Caleb Martin and, and, and a bunch of Highsmith, a bunch of guys off the bench. That's going to be a pretty good second unit if he comes off the bench. All right, so the Knicks have now lost three in a row. They lose tonight by 10.